Hey, in this video, we're going to be talking about the eBay Spring 2019 seller update. I went ahead and read this entire thing so you don't have to read it. I also listened to the eBay podcast that they have all about it. So I got all the information so you don't have to spend your time going through it yourself. I'll tell you exactly what you need to know. So we're going to spend the first six or seven minutes going through that. The rest of the time is going to be all Q&A. So if you're watching this later and wondering why this video is so long, that's why. The first six or seven minutes is the main topic. The rest is just questions and answers. So we're going to get right into this right after the intro. Hey, I'm Paul, and I'm committed to teaching you the exact strategies I use to create multiple six-figure businesses on eBay and Amazon. These are the same methods that changed my life, and I'm here to show you how they can change yours as well. All right, guys, so welcome back. And like I said, we're going to be talking about the spring 2019 seller update. So I made a list of everything that's important that you guys need to know. And hey, what's up everyone in the chat, live chat? Um, I'll give you guys a shout out in a minute, but let me know if everything looks good and if the sound quality is good or if I'm too loud or too soft. All right, so this is what you guys need to know. First thing that they started talking about is good till canceled listings. And by the way, guys, if everything looks and sounds good, just give the video a thumbs up so that I know. Okay, so look, uh, good till canceled listings. There is a change that they are making to this. It's not a huge deal, but it probably make our lives a little bit easier here. So previous, so first of all, what are these good till canceled listings? So good till canceled listings are ones where you list an item up for sale, and what happens is if the item doesn't sell, then after 30 days, the item will be relisted automatically. It actually doesn't even ever come down. So all your sales history is maintained. So let's say I have a water bottle that I'm selling, this green water bottle, let's say, and I have like hundreds of them, or I'm doing a drop shipping model where I basically have an unlimited supply of them. So what I do is I list the green water bottle up for sale. If it sells, the quantity goes to zero, and then I could put the quantity back up to let's say one or two. Then if it doesn't sell, or regardless really, after 30 days, the listing will automatically keep going as opposed to ending. Usually after 30 days, the listing would end. So that's what good till canceled means. Like I said, it normally used to be every 30 days, now they're doing it on calendar days. So the calendar, if let's say you list it on the third of the month, May 3rd, then it will be renewed on June 3rd. So that's just something for you to be aware of if you see that change coming up in the future. The next change is, is kind of a cool one, doesn't really matter too much. Well, it, it does matter a little bit for sellers, but not a huge deal because it won't really impact us. And that's that you can now become tax exempt on eBay. So tax exemption is something I talk about a lot on this channel because I, okay, great question from Ed. What happens if a calendar month doesn't have the right number of days? So let's say you list the item on December 31st and then it's February and February only has 28 days. They do address that in the seller update. They basically say that it will be relisted on the closest calendar month. So it would be relisted on the 28th of the month. Great question though. So like I said, becoming tax exempt. This is something I talk a lot about on the channel because I talk a lot about how to become tax exempt on Home Depot, on Amazon, on walmart.com. So when you purchase items on those websites, you don't have to pay them sales tax. You gotta set this up right and have all your licenses, but it does help a lot. And it only really works if you are reselling items. Well, now, if you are buying items from eBay for the purpose of reselling them, you can also do that. You just have to submit the proper tax exempt documents the same way you would if you were drop shipping or buying products from Home Depot, Walmart, or Amazon. Now, this doesn't apply for every state, only the states where the sales tax is managed by eBay. And eBay is slowly adding more of these states in and they're actually going to be adding even more in, which is really great for us as sellers. So us as sellers, we have to collect sales tax for many states, but eBay and Amazon are slowly doing that more for us, which saves us a big headache. So Minnesota, they're already doing, 
Washington, Iowa, Connecticut, DC, they just started doing Nebraska, New Jersey, all are being done by eBay for us. Later this year, they're adding Alabama, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, South Dakota, and South Carolina. So that's gonna be a huge help for us as sellers. The other thing that's going on is that eBay has said that they are changing the order numbers system. Now, I don't exactly know what that's going to look like. They haven't really said what it's going to look like. Um, but what they are going to do is they said it's going to look nicer. It's going to be easier for us somehow, and it's going to be a number system that makes more sense. We'll have to wait to see exactly what that means and um, what exactly they are promising here, I, I don't know. But they, did, they, they have made that promise to us. The next section I wanna talk about is final value fees because there's gonna be some big updates to final value fees. Normally when you're selling on eBay, once the item sells, eBay takes a portion of that sale and keeps it for themselves. And that's how they make their money. One of the ways to make their money. So for most of us, they're gonna take 9.15% of the sale price and keep it for themselves. Now these final value fees have always been capped at a certain dollar limit, but eBay is now increasing that cap amount. So it used to be $250 for basic and premium store subscriptions. They're bumping it up to $350, which means that they are gonna make more money. They're doing this to make more money. Now, when I say basic and premium stores, when you first start selling on eBay, you're allowed to just start selling without paying eBay to, to start listing items. But you can pay for what's called a store subscription. There's different levels to it. Basic and premium are two of those different levels, just so you know where we're coming from there. The other thing going on with final value. So like I said, most of us are paying 9.15% of a final as a final value fee. But if you have a high rate of what's called item not as described cases, eBay last year said that they're going to tack on top of the 9.15% an additional 4%. So if a lot of buyers try to return items and say, they're returning it because the item was not as described, you would have gotten hit with an extra 4% if you got too many of those. Now eBay is saying it's not gonna be 4%, it's going to be 5%. So they're increasing it even more. Again, this is more money for eBay, that's what they're doing. Now this is the one that ticks me off the most. It ticked me off a lot when they did it last year and it ticks me off again that they're doing it, uh, hold on a second here, again that they are doing it here again. And the reason it, it takes me off so much is because this f is in a way fundamentally unfair because what's going on is a lot of times these buyers purchase the item, they don't want it, they have buyer's remorse. And they know that if they select when they're returning the item or say that they just don't want the item anymore, that eBay will make them pay to ship it back. So what they do is they lie. They lie about it and they say, hey, this item wasn't what I ordered and that's the reason I'm returning it. And for that, and because that happens to people, people are gonna get hit with this additional 5% fee and it's not even true, it's not even real. So that kind of stinks, it always ticked me off and it ticks me off that eBay didn't listen to sellers and instead did, the, did something worse. Now this hasn't impacted me because I do not have a high rate of item not as described cases, but I have a buddy of mine, Brian, that this did happen to. And it really, it really frustrated his business when it happened to him. Which kind of brings me to the next point, which is they had a whole section in the update about seller protections. And the first thing they brought up here is that they're going to make it easier, they say, for us as sellers to report abusive buyers and for eBay to identify them through some sort of automation within their system. Now, this sounds great because we can get these buyers off the platform, but we all know that this is kind of a joke because once a buyer is kicked off, they can easily make another account and get right back onto eBay. So I don't really see the too much value in that. However, they also said that eBay, they promised that they will remove negative feedback and defects from your account when, quote, you've done your part. Now, they do give an example of when you've done your part and what it means. So in this example they give, it's you upload tracking numbers showing on-time delivery. But other than that, what exactly does you've done your part mean? It's kind of vague, it's not very clear. Are they saying that if 
you know, we have a bunch of buyers who are being abusive and they open up return cases for high item not as described. Will they then get rid of those on your account so they won't count against you? Uh, I'm not sure. There's, there's always a lot of unknowns with these seller updates, unfortunately. A lot of things that they allude to and don't really make clear. Um, so this seems to be one of them right here. Okay, so the next topic, and there's, there's more about seller protection. I'm gonna be talking about that at the end of this little section of the video. But before we get there, I wanna talk about promoted listings because there's a small change here. Originally, you needed a store subscription, which I mentioned before, in order to do promoted listings. Now eBay is saying you don't need a store subscription. Anyone who sells on eBay can do promoted listings. Of course, this means more money in eBay's pocket. So these promoted listings, what they are, is let's say you list this green water bottle, you guys can finally see it now, this green water bottle up for sale on eBay. Well, that might rank on like page four of the search results, but you can pay to have it listed on hopefully page one, depending on how much you pay. And you don't actually pay the money up front. What happens is if someone clicks on the listing, which is on page one and buys it through that listing, then eBay is going to charge you the final value fee, probably 9.15%, or and on top of that, they're going to charge you a percentage, uh, a promoted listing fee referral percentage on top of that. So that's how the promoted listings work and anyone can do them now. Now, let's talk about the big elephant in the room, the big thing that everyone wants to know about, what's going on with the drop shipping policy on eBay. And this is what, it says in the update, it says, if you're drop shipping from retail uh, websites, eBay's going to take your listings, they're going to be lowered in the search results, giving sellers who own their own inventory or drop ship from wholesalers greater search visibility. Now, this is not a new rule. This is not a new, new language that they have used. This is something that's actually been around for over a year now. This first came about around April 20th, 2018. And what we noticed was that a lot of drop shippers did get lowered in the search results, and we weren't sure why. eBay recently, not even as of this, this was actually a few months ago, recently put it into writing, kind of clarify what was going on for us. Now, when this happened in April of 2018, the eBay community kind of like split in two different ways. There were some people who just continued to do what they were already doing. And what they were already doing was they were listing items up for sale, and anytime they felt that their sales weren't as high as they wanted them to be, or they wanted their sales to pick up, they would just lower their price. And obviously when you lower your price, it's going to increase your sales. So that's what some people continue to do. And now they're lower their prices so much that you know it's it's very, they're finding other ways to make money on the back end with discounted gift cards, price matching, and things like that. And the reason that works so well is because you don't have to worry about getting lowered in the search results when you are giving the best price and sometimes giving better prices than those who are wholesalers or those who do own their own inventory. So that's how those people are, are being so successful with this business model, even if their account has been flagged as a drop shipping account. Now, the other split here was that other people said, you know what? I, I don't wanna settle for that. I wanna find out what's going on and how I can get my sales back up to the way they were without lowering my, my margins. So a lot of us experimented, kind of the, the community came together and did a lot of you know research together, trying different, experimenting with different things. And we discovered ways that work. And it's basically, you want to make it so that eBay doesn't know that you are drop shipping. Now, when you go into eBay's official policy, what they say is, if you use drop shipping, you are still responsible for the safe delivery of the items within the time frame you stated in your listings and the buyer's overall satisfaction with their purchase. eBay calls this the top takeaway when it comes to their eBay drop shipping policy. So that's what eBay really cares about. eBay wants to make sure that their customers, their customers, because they're not our customers on eBay, they're eBay's customers. They wanna make sure that eBay's customers are getting the items, they're getting the right items, and that we are providing 
a experience so that the buyer has an overall satisfaction with their purchases. If we can do that as drop shippers and we can kind of fly under the radar, then we've found that our sales do go back to the way they used to be um, or before this policy was enacted and everything's fine. So those are kind of the two splits that are still working with drop shipping. Like I said, this is not a new thing. This is something we've known about and have found ways to work around it or work with it despite these this language that's just been added in. Now, I wanted to quickly announce a winner that I had. So I ran a, a little bit of a giveaway a couple of weeks ago and haven't picked a winner yet because I've been moving and stuff. So a lot going on. So I'm going to pick that winner now and I do that by clicking right here. And I can move this over so I can see it. And somewhere in here it says pick a winner. Give me a second to find it. Pick a winner. There it is. So I had anyone who commented on this video and said, I see what you did there. Oops, there. So let's see. There. So this person just won, Ahmed just won an Amazon gift card. So Ahmed, send me an email, paul at pauljlipsky.com and make sure to send a screenshot from inside your YouTube account so I know it's really you and then I'll send you your Amazon gift card. And if you guys, most a lot of you might not know that this giveaway was even going on. This was only for people who are on my newsletter. So if you do want to, make sure you don't miss out on a future newsletter. I, I do do these giveaways sometimes. Then underneath this video, I think it's the second link underneath the link for the seller update. If you click on that link, that's how you can sign up for the newsletter. You'll get emails every time I make videos about, sorry, every time I have new content about eBay and Amazon drop shipping, um, personal development and giveaways as well. So you do want to sign up for that. Okay, so that's everything I have for the spring seller update. And then I'm going to spend the rest of this time answering any questions you guys have about, let me get rid of this, about eBay or Amazon dropshipping, anything else. I do have some videos saved up. I'm sorry, I'm not talking. I'm trying to do two things at once. I do have some questions signed, uh, did it again. I have questions saved up from the week. People ask me in the comment section on my videos. So if you guys are watching this on replay and wanna ask a question, just leave it in the comment section of any of my videos and I'll be sure to answer it either right away or in a future video. All right, so let's see who's here. We have 154 people here. Thanks for joining me on this Friday afternoon. We have Maxime here. What's up, Maxime? Tori, hope I delivered for you. Am I Polish? No, my, my ancient ancestors are Russian, I believe. Uh, what's up, Titans? Hey, Nick, how's it going? Max in the house. What's up, Max? Nero, what's up? It's good to hear from you recently. Hannah, thanks for being here. We have Secure Logic LLC, great name from Connecticut. What's up? I think you're probably near Steve Rakin from rakinprofit.com. What's up, Rich? Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks again, Ed, for that great question before, so I can clarify. Let's see. <laughs> Bobby says, figures Minnesota was on that list of places that eBay was collecting tax for. They never miss anything. Yeah, it seems like one of those states. What's up, Hector? From my old neighborhood, New York City. Just moved out of there, here into Florida. Uh, let's see. What's up, Joe? Thanks for being here. Okay, Patrick says, is it a tough transition from eBay to Amazon? I currently sell clothing on eBay right now. So Patrick, it, there is, there is a learning curve, of course, from eBay to Amazon. One of the things I've always said about eBay is that it's kind of like the Wild West. It's a good training ground for people because they are pretty lax with some rules and it's just easier to get started. It's not as many rules, I would say, or I'd say they're not as strict with their rules as they are in Amazon. So it is a good place to get started. 
Transitioning from eBay to Amazon, Patrick, I'm not quite sure what kind of selling you do, but if you are drop shipping, the transition, you got half of it down, right? If you're drop shipping on eBay, you got half of it down. You know how to work with your suppliers. You might even know how to work with virtual assistants, but Amazon in terms of their metrics and everything is a whole nother beast. One of the problems with Amazon, like I said, really tough with their metrics. You wanna make sure that you are keeping on top of them. You are providing outstanding customer service. On eBay, you can get away a little bit after, especially after a little bit of time with providing like subpar customer service. I never recommend it, but I see people getting away with it all the time. On Amazon, as soon as your metrics start to dip and customer service is included in those metrics, as soon as that happens, you get, you're in trouble. Your sales are not gonna be as good on Amazon if your metrics are low. So those are the kind of things you wanna be aware of. I wouldn't be afraid of it. I hope I'm not scaring you right now. I wouldn't be afraid of Amazon drop shipping. I'm just telling you the differences between them. Now, the trade-off there is that Amazon is huge, right? And lots of people are buying on there. The, the amount of money that's being spent on Amazon is insane. So that's a trade-off right there. Higher risk, but higher reward for sure with Amazon. But if you're doing, I'll say if you're doing like retail arbitrage and you're, and you're plan to send the items to Amazon FBA, it's actually easier for you because you are sending the products to Amazon, Amazon, Amazon is going to take care of all of the fulfillment for you. So in that way, it's going to be easier for you once you figure out the FBA logistics. But if you're doing retail arbitrage and merchant fulfilled, a lot of it's gonna be the same. What's up, Daniel? Just completed the course, ready to begin. Welcome, man. Okay. Happy Friday. What's up, Mario? Happy Friday. Okay. So businessman says, I just got an email saying I could not charge sales tax anymore. Now, I am, I was sick of answering this question, sick of talking about this, but I gotta talk about it because this has come up a lot recently. Even though I've made many videos about it, even though I've talked about it during these live streams so many times, it's okay, maybe you, you didn't see those videos. So it's fine, that's why I'm saying it again. Let me say it again because someone just asked me this on Instagram. You are not allowed to charge sales tax for a particular state unless you are registered to do so. Unless you have a permit or a license, whatever they call it in that state, a sales tax permit for that state to collect sales tax for that state. You are not allowed to do it unless those conditions exist. So this person on Instagram, and I don't blame them because you, a lot of you guys don't know, it's very confusing. He said, okay, I'm shopping on Walmart and Walmart's charging me sales tax. So I'm just going to charge my customers on eBay sales tax. You're not allowed to do that. You would have to register with each state or not exactly, but you have to register with at least one state and there's a bunch of other rules, but for now, just one state, primarily the state you live in, register with them as a business, get a sales tax permit from them, and then you can start collecting sales tax for just that one state. If you wanna collect for the other states, you have to register in those states. And you don't get to keep that money either. You then have to take that money after you collect it and give it to the state. So if I collect money for New York or for customers that live in New York, if I, and then, at, then every quarter I have to send that money to New York. Same thing for New Jersey. I think eBay is taking care of New Jersey for us soon. Um, same thing with any other state. Um, so just be aware of that. So if you got an email from eBay saying that, hey, you're collecting sales tax, and now we want proof that you're allowed to collect sales tax, this is what they're talking about. They wanna see those permits. So what you have to do is in the email, there's a link, click on that link, and that will bring you to a form that you can fill out, upload the, the documents. You could just take a picture of them with your phone and upload them to your computer, and then attach them to that form send them and then you'll be allowed to continue to collect sales tax. If you don't have those forms, then you're not allowed to do it. So just be aware of that and also answer the email. 
in one of my accounts, I didn't answer the email and my account was restricted for a week. So you don't want to ignore those emails. What would you suggest are some simple VA tasks for those of just for those of us just starting out? Without a doubt, the first thing you should do or have a virtual assistant do is either list products or fulfill orders. And that really depends on where you are in the process, Hector. If you're uh, you know, going along well and getting a lot of orders, then you're probably getting bogged down with doing order fulfillment. So, sorry. So have them start fulfilling those orders for you. That's going to free up a lot of time for you and you can focus on product research and customer service. Now, if, if your store is just starting out and you really wanna hire a virtual assistant right off the bat, uh, which I don't think is necessary, but I know people who do it and I know people who are successful because they do it. So if that's you, then what you wanna do is hire them to do product research for you. Now, you have to know how to do it yourself first. So don't just think you can hire it out because while there are virtual assistants out there who are gonna be better at product research than you are, without a doubt, what you're going to find is that you won't know if they are unless you know how to do it. Maybe you'll get lucky, probably not. So you have to know how to do the product research first before you hire someone else to do it. So learn them and then outsource. Those are the two that I started with and that I recommend other people start out with as well. Um, okay, great question, Alex. So Alex is a drop shipper. He is drop shipping on eBay and he has an agreement with a supplier. So that's great. So then you're not doing retail arbitrage drop shipping. You have an agreement with a supplier and you want to use software to help you automate it, but it's the same software that we use for retail arbitrage drop shipping. Um, is that going to be a problem? I think it's going to be a problem because I think that's this, the software is what's identifying you as a drop shipper when you use the API software specifically. So that's what I would avoid, even if it happens to be the case that there is a legitimate supplier that works with that software. And that's one of the flaws with eBay's logic in all of this. Um, okay. See. Great, great um, idea here from Zitra. When I am making at least $2,000 in profit a month on eBay, I will start drop shipping on Amazon. That's a solid plan. I always say multiple streams of income are awesome. Great, really smart idea to diversify, but don't try to do two or three at once, especially when you even haven't even mastered one of them. So master one of them, you start out on eBay, so get there and then transition over to Amazon. It's a really smart idea. Oh, great question from Lazy Abram. And thanks for being here, man. I appreciate you coming back. So how are you going about the new changes to PayPal now that they are keeping fees no matter what? Yeah, so this one, I forget if I made a video about this. I think it was while I was moving. Um, sorry, while I was moving. And this one ticked me off a lot at first. So what this is, is that it used to be when, when you had an, when, so PayPal, just like eBay, takes a percentage of your fee. It's usually about 2.9%, sorry. They take a percentage of the final cost of the item when you sell it. So if you sell a $100 item, they're gonna take 2.9% plus 30 cents, which is $2.90 plus 30 cents is $3.20, right? If I did the math right in my head, so that's how much they are going to take right now. But if you, the item gets returned or the, or the order gets canceled, then PayPal has always returned that 2.9%. They always kept, kept the 30 cents, but they would at least return the 2.9%. And that makes sense because you didn't make any money on it and you can't always control, and usually you can't control when the buyer wants to cancel an order or return it. So those, that's always existed. Now PayPal says they're not gonna return any fees no matter what. So if the buyer wants to cancel an order, then you, you don't get your fee back from PayPal. If the buyer returns the item, you don't get your fee back. So this really stinks. I was really mad about it and I thought it was kind of unfair, <laughs> but you know, life's not fair. So I did some math and looked at it and the, 
you know, the amount in the past two, two to three years or yeah, two years that I've been doing drop shipping that I would have lost out on if PayPal had, had this policy the whole time is just a really small percentage of my overall profit very small percentage, almost an, uh, yeah, an insignificant amount. I don't have the exact numbers. I was doing it on a piece of paper before I moved, but I don't have the numbers now, but it was a very low amount. Um, so just going forward, it's it stinks, but I didn't see it as a huge, huge problem. Now, what stinks even more about this is that we're not really supposed to charge restocking fees on eBay anymore which now with these new policies, we should be allowed to, because if we are getting charged money in fees, no matter what, then we should be able to charge a restocking fee when it's appropriate. That's my opinion. But I'm sure eBay doesn't listen to my, and PayPal doesn't listen to my opinion. Awesome, man. We have Patrick in the house, one of my students, oh no, potential future students. So what's up, Patrick? Thanks for being here. Um, okay. So good question from S Lund. Thanks for being back here. Paul, I'm using Walmart as my source. I always list items that are over $35 so I get free shipping. That's right. I see other people listing items for $4 and $6. How can they do this without paying shipping? So you're right. Any item over $35 on Walmart gets free shipping. Any item under under $35, you're going to have to pay $5.99 for shipping in most cases. So what most people do, if it's a $20 item, they'll take the $20, add $5.99 on top of it. So now they say the cost of the item is $25.99. From there, you can mark it up and mark it up enough to cover eBay fees and PayPal fees, et cetera, and to make a profit. So for most items under $35, that's what people are doing. For other items under $35, there are a couple of different things people do. So what you can do is bundle two of them together. So if it's two, if it's a $20 item, let's say again, we'll use this water bottle as 20 bucks on Walmart. You can bundle two of them and create a listing on eBay and say, hey, I'm selling two of these water bottles and it's $40. And they're gonna say, hey, I can get two for $40. $40 or I can get two under this other listing for 20 plus 5.99 is 26 times two is uh, $52. So you see the difference right there. I hope that math, hope, hope what I said just made sense without really writing it down. So that's what people are doing as well, or they're not getting it from Walmart at all. A lot of times the items that you find in Walmart can also be available on other websites that do have free shipping on even cheaper items under certain circumstances, like Home Depot and Target, even though you're not supposed to drop ship from Target. Okay, what's up? Oh yeah, another great point by Andrew, and I forgot to touch on this, when it comes to comparing eBay to Amazon, the hardest part about Amazon, or one of the hardest parts, and Andrew says the hardest part, I think it's one of them, is that they hold your money for two weeks. So money management. So yeah, Andrew, you're right. This is this is probably the hardest part. Money management, cash flow. I'm going to be making a video about this cash flow on Amazon because when you sell items on Amazon, Amazon holds your money for two weeks, which means that you have to get money, you have to have your own money or you have to have credit cards or use a service like Payability in order to, in order to, um, pay for the items and get them to your customers or refill your stock if you're doing retail arbitrage or refill your stock if you're doing FBA until Amazon releases the money to you every two weeks. So it's a big problem for some people. Uh, I, you know, this, this one goes right over my head. I'm not gonna lie, Andrew. I might have to ask Tyler about this one later. If you are a poker player, eBay equals Hold'em and Amazon equals Omaha. I do obviously know what Hold'em is. I, I'm not familiar with Omaha in terms of poker. No, eBay hot, great question. Should I pay my VAs monthly or should I pay them only a commission on sales that are made? 
I do not think it's fair to pay them on a commission basis. I think you either pay them a fixed monthly salary, a bi-weekly or weekly salary, or you pay them a hourly fee, or you pay them for every listing they make, something like that. I think expecting a commission like that, I don't think is fair. Now, a bonus commission is a really smart idea. So if you're able to track which listings are theirs and how well the business is doing as a result of that, and you can give them a bonus for that, that's a really great incentive. That's fair for everyone because they're still gonna get a regular salary that they can count on, but they will also be um, motivated to do better and to provide better service for your store because they get a bonus for it. Uh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. How's Florida? Just moved here. This is my first, I can't believe it, but this is my first full week here. Um, so I'm actually a little tired because this was my first full week kind of working again. I had to take a couple of weeks off basically because packing, moving, we had a little vacation in there. It was just absolutely crazy. So now here settled in, full week working, I did some really exciting stuff with my Amazon store uh, this week, spent a lot of time on that and kind of exhausted from it in a good way, a really good feeling. But it's beautiful here, absolutely beautiful. Okay, Mike, good question. Paul, this is off topic. It's not off topic if it's about eBay or Amazon dropshipping. Nothing's off topic. So just ask anything you want. I want to list an item f uh, on Amazon, but there's no ASIN for it. Am I allowed to list it anyway? Yeah, you absolutely are. So generally, or well, not generally, it is easier to list items that already have an ASIN for it. It's much less work for you but you can absolutely create your own listings. It does take some extra work. A lot of times it's not worth it because there's no guarantee it will sell. And you don't know if it's going to sell because the great thing about existing ASINs is that you're able to see, hey, this item that people are drop shipping from Walmart to Amazon is already selling really well. So now I'm gonna sell that item. With the new ASINs, you really can't, you really won't know exactly. You kind of can kind of guess, but you really won't know. Remind me of something I gotta, gotta do later. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, so this might be a better idea. If you see a listing on Amazon that's doing okay, but maybe it's not doing great or, or, or whatever, um, then what you can do is improve the images on it. Um, let me write myself a note. <laughs> that was something I want to add to my Amazon course that I just thought of. Um, so yeah, you can add your own pictures and make the description better. It will have to go through an approval process with Amazon though, just so, just so you're aware of that. Oh, what's up, Victor? Glad to have joined the Titans. Welcome, man. Okay, so Forever Noob, I like that name because what that says to me, Forever Noob, is that you are always learning, you're, you always feel like you have this kind of beginner's mind as they call it in Zen, which is this idea that we're, we're all new to, this, to new experiences. Every moment's a new moment, and so you're always new to that moment. Um, I think I'm totally butchering this explanation. But the general idea is that if you always have this, that's what it is. This is what beginner's mind means. Beginner's mind means that there are always new things to learn. And anytime we come into something new, we're like a sponge. We're willing to learn from anyone, listen to everyone for advice. But as soon, but after a while, we can begin to learn more and we slowly start to close off. We say, yeah, I know how to do that. Maybe you found this at your job where you first started, you wanted to learn from everyone, then you figured out how your job works and now, you don't wanna hear it from anyone. You don't wanna hear it from your boss. You know how to do your job. Just leave me alone and let me do my job, right? But beginner's mind says, if we always have an open mind and always approach every situation as if we're a beginner, our minds will always be like a sponge. We'll always be able to learn something new 
And that can open up so many opportunities for us as human beings. It will allow us to connect with more people because you're not going to shut people out because you just assume that they're not going to be able to help you. So that kind of mindset can be really powerful for us as humans. But let's get to your actual question. Forever Noob says, when hiring virtual assistants, are there state or federal regulations, laws about payroll tax or employee insurances? Are there even specific regulations or laws about virtual assistants? Thank you. Great question. So one of the benefits of hiring virtual assistants that live outside the United States, like the Philippines or India, I hire all mine from the Philippines now using a great website. Um, I'm blanking on the name, but I have the website linked up below my affiliate link for that. It will say that this is the one I use for virtual assistants. Um, so that's where I hire them all from and they're all from the Philippines. And the great thing about that is that they're not considered employees. They're considered independent contractors. So when it comes time to for taxes and payroll, it just counts as an independent contractor, a, a, a business expense, but I don't have to run payroll or all those other complicated things that come when you hire someone to actually work on your business. Most, yeah, that's what I'll say. Thank you. I think I got a little bit of a tan here in Florida. For my drop shipping business, I don't do any Facebook ads. No, I don't. Um, for my online courses, I do do some Facebook ads. I don't personally do them. I've tried to do it myself before and it was really interested and exciting, excited to try it and actually was doing a little bit of it and it was doing fine, but it to properly run Facebook ads of any kind, whether it's for an online course like I teach or Shopify, which a lot of people run ads for, you really have to stay on top of it. You have to manage your ads. You have to make fresh content for it. You have to continually go in and tweak your audiences as they call it. Your audiences are basically who the ads are going to appear in front of and where. You constantly have to be testing stuff like that. And while that stuff is like, kind of right up my alley because I like statistics and, and and testing different things. It I didn't really see the value too much in me doing it because it's not something I teach about. Whereas if I spent that time instead learning, spending more time testing things with drop shipping and making my drop shipping stores better, that's something that's not only going to benefit me and my store, but it's also something I could teach you guys as well. So the drop the the Facebook ads is something I outsource to experts um, and they just take care of it for me. So Wilma says, hey, I just bought your course. Welcome Wilma. But I wanna know if I need a business account and an LLC to start. So you do not need, you do not need an LLC to start any sort of eBay or Amazon business, but it, there are benefits to it, obviously. Um, the biggest benefit is just with liability, hence the name LLC, which stands for Limited Liability Company, just helps keep you and your business separate in case there's any lawsuit potentially against your business, it won't be after you personally. So that's really the biggest benefit and just, you know, come taxes, sometimes it's easier to keep them separate, although they're kind of the same thing anyway. Um, I won't get too much into that. But the short answer is no, you don't need that to start. Let's see. Um, okay, so this kind of relates to the question about Walmart and shipping items. Um, shipping, I have two items in my cart. I wanna ship them to two different addresses. How can I do that in Walmart? You can't, it's just not an option. This is why people add $5.99 to the price of the item. Oh, sweet. So eBay Hot's doing it. Um, so, and it says it's working well for him. I also know that the guys at Zeke Analytics have been testing it as well and have seen results. Um, it's got, I, I gotta write that down. I gotta try it now. <laughs> Paul Y, I'm Gary Y. Paul, I don't feel guilty about watching your live streams during the day. I'm at 10.99 and not at W2. 
Maybe I should, oops, maybe I shouldn't have put that up on the screen. I don't want to get you in trouble. Um, yes, okay. Okay, Victor, I'll answer, try to answer a question, um, but I don't have the course open right in front of me. You're talking about lesson 4.5. Um, yeah, so you want to write down what you have on the screen, which is PayPal immediate pay default. It won't necessarily say default for you. I'm sorry, people have no idea what we're talking about, but Victor, that answers your question. Uh, that's that's the eBay course. Okay, so I did have some questions. I promised people I would answer. Let's see. Kermel says, yesterday Amazon, so this person's drop shipping on Amazon, blocked my account, or maybe they didn't, maybe they're just selling on Amazon because I might have merchandise that may be counterfeit. And they're saying they don't even have that many products up and they're just books they bought around town. They asked for a message asking for proof that the items are authentic uh, and invoices. How can you solve this? So this sounds like what's called an inauthentic suspension, which is the most common suspension on Amazon. And the name really makes no sense because they're not even really claiming that your items aren't real. They just want proof that you kind of, that you have receipts and invoices for them. So you have to put together what's called a plan of action and provide invoices to them or receipts from Walmart. You gotta do it properly. And what I would check out is the Amazon lawyer. He has a lot of free resources. Let's see if I can find him real quick on YouTube. If you search for the Amazon lawyer and I will give him a shout out because he deserves one. This is his channel. It's Rosenbaum. I don't know how to say his partner's name, uh, PC. But if you search for these guys, if you just search for the Amazon seller, you'll find his channel. And he has a ton of videos about this topic because it is such a common topic that comes up. All right, so next question I had. Okay, big shout out to Jason here. Jason's watching my videos. I think he might, I'm not sure if he's a student or not. And he says, I'm 15 years old with $5,000 in sales, all from your help. So awesome jobs, Jason. It's not all from my help. You definitely put in the work at 15 years old. So congrats, man, that is incredible. Okay, Art P had a question. I just had a return request for for eBay for an item I bought on Amazon, but Amazon is charging me to have it picked up and that charge amount is about the same as the price of the item. I'm not sure what to do. So basically Amazon is charging him to return the item. Is that normal? How does he do that? So that is normal for most items uh, if it's a case of buyer's remorse. So find out from the buyer why they wanna return it if they want to return it because the item was damaged, it was the wrong item, then pass along that message to Amazon and they'll, they won't they will charge you to return the item. And Hypertrophy says, hey Paul, do you recommend software that does it all? So basically what that means is software that will list items, that will reprice them, that will do order fulfillment for you, where you can answer customer questions inside of it. It's like an all-in-one dropshipping platform. And no, I don't use that software. And the reason I don't use that is because I don't use software that connects with eBay's API. And you need that, <clears throat> you need that in order to do that, uh, to, to, in order to have an all-in-one. So that's not what I use right now. If you wanna see what I use right now, uh, that will be linked up down below. It's, I'll say this is the repricer that I'm using right now. And that will always be updated in case something changes, though I don't see it changing. Okay, live questions. Uh, let's see. Daniel says, do we need to have our federal and state, no, just federal and state EINs before we begin our business? EIN is only issued by the federal government, first of all. And you don't, don't again, you don't need one to start. It's so easy to get one. You might as well get it. That way you're not just 
passing out your social security number, like, I wanna say willy nilly, but I think that word sounds funny. So you're not just passing it for whatever. You're not just passing out your social security number willy nilly. You actually have like a business number, business EIN that you can give out. You could also use that to open up a business bank account and you can give that number instead of your social to people like PayPal. Okay, so how can I use promoted listings? Well, anyone can use them now. If you're selling the new seller update, you can actually do it when you go to list the item if you're doing it completely manually. At the bottom, there'll be a little check mark or a little box that you can check off saying you wanna do promoted listings, or you can do a promoted listing campaign, or eBay is going to make it even easier now. And this was something else in the seller update. They're saying that when you go to your all items page, it will, you can do promoter listings from there as well. That's not available as of the making of this video, but they said it will be available soon. You don't have to do a high percentage. It really depends on where you're sourcing your items from and what your competition is at and what kind of markup you have. But for most people, even like a 1% for all your products makes a big difference. We have time for a few more questions, but if you guys are liking this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. If you don't wanna miss the next live stream, make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell underneath this video um, so that you get notified the next time that I do go live on YouTube so you don't have to miss that. I'll also be doing these lives on Instagram as well um, at the same time. So if you guys, if that's easier for you, you can follow me on, on, your, on Instagram at Paul J. Lipsky. I tried to do it today, but my phone holder, I, I snapped it when I tried to do it. I guess, I don't know if I was, if it was just broken or if I was too strong, I just snapped the whole thing. So I have to buy another one now with Amazon, which everything's one day shipping now, which is pretty cool. Um, um, let's see. Hey, 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 this is live right now. Okay, so Hector says, if I'm just starting out with hiring a VA, what do I give them access to? Well, if you have something that you use for research, like Zeek Analytics, you wanna give them access to that. If they are, I'm talking about if you're drop shipping on eBay, if you need them to list, then you will have to give them, pretty much have to give them access to your eBay account. There are some ways around that, which I go over in my virtual assistant course, but um, it, it's a workaround, it does work um, using another service. So you don't have to give them access to eBay. If it's Amazon though, it's really easy. You can give people access to Amazon virtual assistants and only give them limited access. eBay has promised us many times that they're going to make that available. And they say this year is gonna be the year, but they also said that uh, a while ago and it never happened. Okay. Yes, Mario. So as of right now, what I use for listing is SkewGrid. I'm sorry, for repricing is SkewGrid. That's a software that I use and I'll have that linked up down below. Sorry. And when you sign up for SkewGrid, you get free access to SkewFetch and SkewFetch you can use to list the items onto eBay. So that's the system that I use right now. They work together really well. And I say right now, I'm very happy with them, but things are always changing. I'm not married to one software. Uh, I got this question recently why I've, I've switched. I'm not married to one software. Um, I do the one, I use the one that works the best for my business. And then I tell you guys which one I'm using. I'm not gonna tell you guys one that I don't use or one that I don't think works. Um, so. That's where I'm at right now. That's what I'm using right now though. Uh, if I missed your question, uh, just ask it again in the live chat. Yeah, if you guys have any questions for me, honestly, the best way to, to get in touch with me personally is on Instagram. So add me at Paul J. Lipsky, go ahead and do it right now and just send me a message, say, hey, what's up? Um, that's the best way to get to me because 
I'm gonna be 100% honest, my email, I only answer, I only check once a day. Um, and I go on Facebook about once a day because that allows me to be hyper-focused on my work. But I'm not always hyper-focused because I go on Instagram a lot. And um, if you send me a DM on Instagram, I'll probably answer much faster than anywhere else. But guys, that's all we have time for right now. Uh, thanks so much for everyone who hung out with me this Friday afternoon. Um, but if you guys are watching this in the future, whatever time you're watching this, thanks for watching it. If you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up. I would appreciate that so much. And if you want to get um, notified next time I go live, make sure to hit subscribe and hit that bell notification. Maybe I have a link underneath this video, maybe I don't, that says click here to get um, notified every time I go live. Um, if you wanna click that, I'll send you a message on Facebook before I go live. Thanks everyone so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.